Andrew Huberman is one of the most popular scientists on social media. I think he's great. He recommends a lot of good advice. He also talks about different supplements. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the supplements that he is taking. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. Do it. So uh, it's on honehealth.com. Andrew Huberman's supplement stack is wild and wildly effective. First up, we have a fish oil. Uh, Huberman is a fan of fish for all the health benefits and of course is one of the most like researched supplements in terms of improving lipid profile and helping with cholesterol levels so of course there is some controversy about uh, fish oil because most of the fish oil i think is kind of bad quality it's uh, very like rancid it's uh, oxidized etc but if you look at the, like the totality of evidence even if it were to be the case the totality of evidence suggests that fish oil has benefits especially for cardiovascular disease and brain health as well now personally i'm not taking a fish oil supplement i'm taking actually a cord liver oil supplement that's less, less likely to be oxidized next supplement is alpha gpc so uh, this one is also important for brain function and cognition so he would found that he would take 300 milligrams of alpha gpc taken 10 to 20 minutes prior to any time i want to focus or concentrate very deeply it works like a choline supplement and choline is one of the most important like nutrients for the brain and it helps to increase acetylcholine in the brain which is kind of the neurotransmitter most involved with uh, like memory learning and uh, myelination and the next one is going to be garlic extract because the alpha gpc because it's choline similar to carnitine can increase the levels of tmao in the gut which is a marker related to cardiovascular disease and uh, of course this one is a bit controversial like many people think that tmao isn't an issue i'm like somewhat in the middle i don't think that uh, you know tmao alone is gonna be like causing cardiovascular disease in my opinion is more of like a marker or something else going on because talking about the fish oil thing then uh, fish actually contains the highest amount of tmao so based on that logic then fish consumption should be associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease but it's not. <laughs> Fish consumption is actually associated with reduced risk of cardiovascular disease. But regardless, the garlic can help to uh, mitigate or reduce the TMAO levels. So I do think that uh, garlic is an uh, amazing food. It's uh, very high in sulfur. It helps with antioxidant defense. And it also has a lot of like these other anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties, especially allicin is the main compound that uh, mediates those health benefits. So I think the allicin, taking allicin is probably more potent than a garlic extract in my opinion uh, so I, I take like maybe 5000 milligrams of allicin every day and uh, i mean there's like wide benefits that you can get from allicin and garlic uh, dietary garlic next up we have tyrosine so taking tyrosine can help with the dopamine levels so you can use it as a nootropic i personally have taken tyrosine in the past i'm not doing it right now because uh, my baseline dopamine levels are already pretty high so i have no issues with like motivation or focus i'm pretty like dialed in with uh, my cognition in terms of being able to just work without any stimulants without any nootropics and uh yeah like the tyrosine can be a very good supplement for lower if you have lower baseline uh, dopamine or if you're just trying to like pick up the slack or just give yourself a, like a short short-term boost next supplement phenylethylamine or pea is a stimulant that may increase dopamine and for Huberman acts as a focus and work aid in order to do intense bouts of work. Now, personally, I haven't used this supplement. I don't really have any comments uh, to it either, but you can get it from things like chocolate. So that's something that I do take. Like I eat uh, dark chocolate uh, pretty much every day. Glutamine, another amino acid, the main like function of it is gonna help to um, improve the intestinal permeability and pretty much supports gut health in that way. I don't take glutamine myself, because I do uh, eat like a relatively high protein diet and I think I'm getting plenty of uh, glutamine from the dietary sources. And of course, there is some controversial, uh, let's say, evidence about the glutamine that it could like feed cancer cells. Creatine, that's something I do take. The main benefits of creatine has to do with like muscle strength and muscle power and muscle speed. Uh, but of course, creatine also has brain and nootropic benefits. So it can help with certainly aspects of uh, brain function, but uh, it also like mitigates sleep loss and actually reduces your sleep demand. I take it pretty much uh, every day. And uh, yeah, I do think that's like one of those supplements that um, over time will be accepted as, as actual like a longevity supplement. Ashwagandha. So this is like this adaptogenic herb and uh, Huberman takes this ancient herb 
to help me reduce my cortisol so I don't get some of the long-term effects of uh, stress. He doesn't take ashwagandha every day, he only does it uh, to uh, deal with short and medium-term stress. Yes, I do think that ashwagandha has good evidence to support its effects for stress management and even uh, increasing testosterone levels, especially for men who have uh, lower testosterone levels. But there are some people online who have shared their experience of taking ashwagandha that it makes them a bit more like docile or reduces their I don't like uh, emotions or something like that. Uh, I haven't experienced anything like that. I'm not taking ashwagandha. I don't have any stress issues. But if I were to have chronic stress or uh, some short-term periods of high stress, then I would certainly uh, consider adding ashwagandha to my stack. Chill out. Next up, we have some testosterone boosters, Tonkat Ali and Fadosia Agrestis. Yes, there are a few studies showing Tonkat Ali helping with uh, testosterone levels. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think that um, Huberman is on uh, testosterone replacement therapy. I might be wrong, <laughs> but uh, you know, if he is taking TRT, then the Tonga Dali and Fadosia Agrestis probably isn't going to do much because the TRT is like 10 times more potent than these uh, supplements. These supplements probably will work if you have low natural testosterone levels, maybe even like normal, moderate testosterone, so like in the middle range, then you will also see probably some improvements. If your natural testosterone is already high, like above 700, 800, something like that, then I wouldn't expect to see like a large jump in uh, testosterone by using these supplements. Next up, we have Athletic Greens. So this is this green powders drink. Um, I do think that uh, micro microgreens and uh, these green supplements, I mean, yes, you, you get <laughs> like a more higher concentration of these uh, vitamins and minerals from those then compared to like actually eating but uh, yeah I mean the dosages are pretty small so you still need to like uh, eat like a well-balanced diet they can certainly work towards increasing your nutrient intake for the day but if your baseline diet is not that nutritious then it's not gonna <laughs> it's not gonna do anything almost uh, because the dosages are still uh, relatively small uh, so it's not gonna be that just take this and you don't need any other uh, vitamins or minerals from your diet at all so yeah, I mean, you still need to eat like a good diet, but uh, as a like a short-term insurance policy, then I don't think that it kind of hurts. Multivitamin as well. On top of that, I personally am not taking any multivitamin. The multivitamins may have like just too many of the things that you already have too much of or that you wouldn't want too much of. So they're almost like filler. The cheaper, cheaper nutrients in the multivitamin are just added there to fill it up and to reduce the price of uh, or the manufacturing cost while not being adequate in a lot of the other uh, like micronutrients that you may be deficient of so uh, if you are taking a multivitamin then it's probably better to actually take a multivitamin that addresses your particular deficiencies so a lot of the you know vitamins and minerals in a multivitamin like zinc or iron or b vitamins chances are you don't need it if you're eating like some animal products if you're eating like a plant-based diet, then yes, you might need iron and B vitamins and zinc. But too much iron, too much zinc can actually have like negative side effects. So instead of taking a multivitamin, I'm a much bigger fan of actually targeted supplementation of specific nutrients that you are specifically uh, deficient of. Next up, protein powder. So yeah, I mean, protein powders are great if you're not getting enough uh, protein from your dietary sources. And it's a good, like uh, easy way to also get uh, you know, generally like a higher amount of protein quickly electrolyte powder so uh huberman's one of the sponsors is uh, lmnt so this is a very high sodium electrolyte powder i'm a f fan of that as well i think uh, it's a great like a satchel that you can carry around with and i uh, use it usually before my workouts uh, if you're like salting your food then you don't need to like deliberately add an electrolyte powder into your day because this powder is 1000 milligrams of sodium per satchel 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium so you are getting quite a lot of sodium but you don't get like substantial amounts of potassium or magnesium so you shouldn't use it as a dietary supplement yes you get a lot of sodium but you also get sodium from the other foods that you're eating and you can easily add sodium to your food by just you know salting it the potassium is something that you want to get actually much larger like the rda for potassium is 4700 milligrams and for the reduced hypertension and cardiovascular disease risk you want to get at least 3400 milligrams so this 200 milligram potassium isn't going to do much and, in, and the 60 milligrams of magnesium also isn't going to do much. Of course, it helps a little bit, but you know, you don't want to take 10 of these. <laughs> you might maybe want to take one or two before a workout, uh, preferably because um, prehydrating with sodium is very beneficial for increasing athletic performance. But if you're already salting your food, you're also eating high sodium foods then you have to be kind of uh, careful uh, with like not taking too much uh, sodium unless you're sweating a lot or unless you're training a lot. If you are uh, working out in in uh, like a hot uh, climate or a hot gym environment for one hour, then you lose up to like 
2,500 milligrams of uh, salt uh, within that time frame. And if you take a sauna as well, then yeah, you do definitely uh, might want to replenish your sodium stores. But for the potassium and magnesium, you want to eat the other foods that contain it, like uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, seafood, and etc. Essential amino acids, EAAs, so the nine essential amino acids. From my own personal experience, uh, they work great. They help with uh, muscle anabolism and reducing muscle catabolism. I find that they work especially great in a fasted state. Like if you have eaten, if you have taken a protein powder, then you probably don't need the EAAs. But if you haven't uh, consumed anything, then the EAAs can work great in a fasted state. So they like reduce some of the muscle catabolism. Awesome, I love protein. Sleep supplements, magnesium threonate, apigenin and L-theanine, aka Huberman's sleep cocktail. 145 milligrams of magnesium threonate or 200 milligrams of magnesium bisglycinate. 50 milligrams of apigenin, 100 to 400 milligrams of L-theanine. So threonate is the magnesium form that is the most bioavailable for the brain and is also the most beneficial for the brain and uh, bisglycinate is the one that has uh, glycine attached to it. So both of them, I think, are great. They're the, one of the most bioavailable forms of magnesium, definitely like the top tier magnesium supplements, in my opinion. Apigenin is one of these like flavonoids inside herbs, especially like parsley and things like that, and it might help with sleep quality. I personally am more interested about the NAD boosting effects of apigenin. So apigenin is a CD38 inhibitor, which can help you to raise your NAD levels. So from a longevity side, apigenin is yes, also like a longevity supplement by inhibiting CD38. L-theanine is an amino acid that uh, helps with like calmness and relaxation. Uh, many people use L-theanine combined with caffeine and co uh, coffee. So uh, if you drink coffee, then take like 200, 400 milligrams of L-theanine. It's very safe, but you can also take it before bed if you are feeling somewhat like anxious or you know, overly aroused. In addition to his sleep cocktail, Huberman takes two grams of glycine and 100 milligrams of GABA three to four nights a week. Now, glycine is something that I take every day. I take at least like five or 10 milligrams a day on most days. Yes, it does help with sleep, but glycine does many other things. It helps collagen synthesis. It helps glutathione synthesis, creatine synthesis, heme synthesis. It increases autology. It lowers blood sugar levels. It reduces inflammation and it also mimics methionine restriction. So glycine is, yeah, one of the cheapest, most effective like uh, biggest bang for your buck in terms of a longevity supplement in my opinion the sleep benefits are part of it but i think most people would probably need at least five to ten grams of glycine every day because you don't really get that much from diet unless you're eating like this gelatin powder and you're chewing on all the drumsticks and uh, stuff like that even then you probably aren't getting enough even then you might need to supplement at least three or five milligrams huberman also takes 900 milligrams of inositol which is a sugar that uh, yes it helps to produce like sleep neurotransmitters, but uh, it also is beneficial for blood sugar regulation. So um, it has a lot of data about diabetes and insulin resistance. And some of the final supplements here to improve uh, heart health, vitamin K2, uh, vitamin E, boron, conjugated linoleic acid, and vitamin D3. So 5,000 IUs of vitamin D3 per day combined with a K2 is a good uh, stack because uh, you need to kind of combine it because uh, the D3 can raise calcium in the blood. So the K2 pretty much uh, directs or helps to utilize the vitamin D3 as well as uh, direct like the calcium into the bones. So K2 is beneficial for heart health, but also bone health generally. Boron is another like underground mineral that helps to boost testosterone levels. And at the same time, it helps to increase vitamin D3 levels as well. So there you have it, Andrew Huberman's supplement stack. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. But if you want to check out my personal stack, then check out the link in the description for a free PDF. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like, subscribe, notification below as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.